Hi guys, my name is Neha Gupta and I am your mentor for current affairs at anajanal.in. So I'm back with the current affairs of September 29, 2020 and today we are going to discuss a hell lot of news. So without wasting any time, let's quickly jump on to our table of contents. But before that, I would like to tell you that subscribe to our channel so that you get the instant notifications of all the videos that we are uploading on the channel and you do not miss out on any information which is relevant for your examination this is to remind you of the telegram channel do subscribe to our telegram channel as well as uh, enjoy the free quizzes there and if you have any kinds of doubts do ask us there connect with your mentors on the telegram now let's discuss our table of contents so first news that we are going to discuss here is about the GDP projection that is given by National Council of Applied Economics Research. Now, this is an Indian think, think tank and a very important organization. Therefore, it is very important for us to understand what GDP projection has been given by this organization. Second is positive pay system for checks introduced by RBI. Third, we will discuss about an MOU signed by India on intellectual property rights what are ipr that is also we will be discussing in the third question then we have iidai systematically important insurers now what is systematically important insurers and what is the uh, news we will be discussing in the fourth question which is going to be in the later half of this video so do not leave the video in the middle because it is very important for you guys to watch the video till the end to crack the exam and also i will try to simplify the news as much as possible so that you don't need to mug up the facts you can understand the things from the basics then we have india's first center for disability sports where is it established and what are the uh, provisions etc we will all discuss it in detail in the uh, later part of the video then rbi is ambassador for consumer awareness world's first shipment of blue ammonia and this is the new part that i have included in the video so in this section part we will be discussing about the questions that my students have asked me in the comment section below so these are some of the very important questions that will be important for you guys also those who have not asked me the uh, questions so these questions are very relevant for yours uh, yours uh, examination as well that is why i have picked up uh, these questions so it is about cop 15 and ibc and this question is about ibc proceedings and loan moratorium so quite interesting we will be discussing in the last part of the video let's quickly begin the question first of today because as i mentioned that we have a lot of news to discuss so we cannot waste our time okay so this is this is our first question that asked us about the gdp forecast given by national council of applied economics research now when we are talking about forecast i want to tell you that you are not required to learn each and every forecast given by every organization there are certain bunch of organizations that are very important for your examination and for that we give a document separately which is named as gdps and forecast so in that document what we do we uh, uh, we choose out the important forecast the important organizations and put the latest forecast given by them in the document so you just have to remember the latest forecast given by any organization not the previous one not the one with which this forecast is being compared so don't remember other forecast just remember the current forecast because otherwise it will be a hell lot of thing a hell uh, lot of pile for you to remember so let's come to our question the question uh, the answer to this question is minus 12.6 so this forecast is for the entire year of fy21 which is 2020 to 2021 
till now our government was silent and the government was only giving forecast on the basis of quarters so we had come across uh, the G gdp forecast for first quarter which was nearly minus 23.9 this is the exact number 23.9 and nearly 24% so it was quite in news that our gdp has shrunk uh, to the level of 24% so this is how the government was giving the gdps in quarters now this government agency has given the quart uh, the forecast for the entire year of fy21 so this is very important for you to remember apart from this what does the organization say about india's gdp growth the organization says that if india wants to achieve the pre pandemic gdp rate of 5.8% then it can only happen by the year 2022 to 23 before it before fy23 india is not in a position to achieve the pre pandemic output level which was 5.8% and the uh, organization also says that if india wants to achieve or wants to sustain a gdp growth rate of 7% on an annual basis so that can be done only by the year 2037 to 38 so this is the long wait we all have to Uh, do we all have to wait till twenty thirty seven to thirty eight in order to achieve a seven percent annual GDP growth rate? So this is the forecast. These are the things that this report mentioned, and this is very important for the examination. Now, apart from the yearly forecast, this report also gives us quarterly forecast. But these quarterly forecasts are not. very important for the examination they are just for your understanding purpose that is why i have not picked up the quarterly gdp forecast because they are not asked in the examination usually so that is why i have picked up only yearly forecast now comes our second question because first question is finished but in case if you have not understood anything then do feel free to ask me in the comment section or if you do not want to ask me in the comment section then you can also ask me in the telegram group so in let's discuss our second question which is about positive paycheck system let's first discuss what this system is now this system has been announced in august 2020 under the monetary policy basically by the monetary policy committee which was convened in august 2020 this positive paycheck system was introduced so this in uh, rbi has now released the guidelines for this positive paycheck system so what is the purpose of this check system the check system aims to ensure the removal of fraud the minimization of fraud so that if you deposit any check in the bank you do not face any kind of fraud and the uh, risk of fraud can be reduced now what is the threshold that we are talking about in the question it is rupees 50000 first of all you need to understand that this check pay system is optional for both the account holders and the banks if the account holder wants to achieve wants to avail the benefit of this check system then the threshold amount for checks is rupees 50000 now what does it mean threshold amount what is the meaning of threshold amount the meaning of threshold amount is that if you want to avail this system your check should be of rupees 50000 or more, more than that you cannot avail this facility of uh, uh, this check system positive pay check system for the checks below rupees 50000 okay and in case if the banks want to make this facility mandatory for checks what is the threshold it is rupees 5 lakhs banks cannot make it mandatory for check uh, for the account holders if the amount of check is below rupees 5 lakhs so these two are the thresholds 
now what will be the function how will this check system positive paycheck system will work okay so it will work in this way that if suppose you have written a check of rupees 50000 and you have given it to someone the uh, other person will deposit it to it to the bank now you will have to reconfirm your details through message or through a mobile application of the bank so that the num the chances of fraud can be minimized so basically you will get a reconfirmation message on your mobile or on your app and in this way your uh, the chances of frauds can be reduced do remember the threshold so we have come to our third question which is with which country has india signed an mou for cooperation on intellectual property rights now what are intellectual property rights intellectual property itself suggesting property that is owned by intellect and these are in the form of patents trademark copyrights so in these forms we can reserve our uh, intellectual property now with which country india has signed this agreement it is denmark and now we will be moving on towards our second, next question which is about domestically systematic important insurance for 2020 to 2021 First of all, we will be discussing about what are domestically important in, uh, important insurance. So SSI are those insurance companies which are so big in nature and capital that they that if they face any kind of liquidation or if they cease to exist, then it is going to uh, hit the entire economy. We have also faced a similar kind of uh, uh, similar kind of thing in the past in case of ILFS. Though we are not talking about ILFS is not a not an insurance company. We are talking about insurance companies here. But I am giving you an example that in case of ILFS, we have already faced the situation when. A uh, default in one company, in just one company, shook the entire economy and particularly the sector of NBFCs. Therefore, the systematically important insurance companies are those companies which are too big to fail. So, this is the phrase used by IRDAI which is the insurance regulator. So too big to fail means if they fail, then the entire economy is going to face the impact of their failure. So now what is the impact? Why certain companies are being chosen to put under SSI? Well, it is quite obvious. If they are too big to fail, then obviously they will have stringent uh, regulations. So IRDR is IRDAI is going to impose strict regulations over these companies which have been categorized as SIIs. IRDAI has chosen three uh, companies, three insurance companies and which three insurance companies are these? It is option A, Life Insurance Corporation, General Insurance Corporation and New India Insurance. Insurance Limited Company. Now guys, do you know what is the speciality over here? It is the New India Assurance Company, which is also the implementing company or implementing agency. Do you remember? We have covered it in the two videos back in the last uh, last week's video. I have discussed about New India Assurance. So do you remember? Okay, so let me tell you that it is important agency for implementing the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan package insurance scheme for healthcare workers do remember these facts guys which i am telling you in the videos because these are very important for the exam point of view and now we have discussed everything about the ssi their annual selection and which companies have been selected in 2020 to 2021 now quickly discuss our second question not the second next question basically India's first center for disability sports. 
so where is it going to be established can you guys tell me in the comment section please tell me your answers i am waiting for your answers because it will give an idea to me that how well are you prepared for the current affairs so do not forget to mention your answers in the comment section below now here let me clear, clarify the air for you it is gwalior gwalior is in madhya pradesh now guys can you see that i have not asked you the state i am asking you the city so now from here you can yourself decipher the depth of questions which are being asked nowadays in rbs abhi nabard examination so do uh, pay attention to the little information as well so here it is gwalior in madhya pradesh now i have to tell you i want to tell you that section 30 of rights of persons with disabilities 2016 so section 30 of rights of person with disability which was implemented in 2016 tells uh, tells the government to develop infrastructure for the pwd infrastructure for what for including them in sports activities so it is for sports inclusion not this act i want to say that it is this section this section 30 tells the government to develop infrastructure for sports inclusion of pwds so this was that was all about this question and we are going to move towards our next question for the day that is about rbi scam customer awareness campaign now guys can you imagine why would rbi conduct a consumer awareness campaign what will be the purpose of this campaign it is very obvious that it is for the financial awareness of the people in order to aware them about the frauds so that is why this awareness cam campaign is conducted by rbi regularly now the person who has been chosen is amitabh bachchan so this was all about this news but there is an interesting fact i i found it very interesting and you will also found it find it interesting as well as of proud so do you know that rbi is the world's most followed bank on social media and it is it has surpassed us central bank so what is the name of us central bank do mention your answers in the comment section i want to know it from you guys that what is the name of us central bank as well as european bank it is very easy i hope that all of my students would know the answers of this question and now it is the last question of the day that we are going to discuss so in this last question we are asked about the world's first shipment of blue ammonia for generating electricity now what what is blue ammonia first of all we will discuss this and then we will move on to the answer of this question so blue ammonia is created out of hydrocarbons by converting hydrocarbons into hydrogen and then hydrogen is converted into ammonia now why did i tell you this why is it important for us to know because nowadays in the the examiner can ask anything from you so it is very speculative for us also that what question is going to be asked in the examination that is why i have told you this thing as well because i found it very interesting as well as important so do remember this this chart as well okay so blue ammonia is created uh, in this manner and it saves or we can say that it reduces co2 emission that is the whole purpose it reduces co2 emissions it will be used in generating electricity and now our question asks us that which country has received the world's first shipment so the answer to this question is japan japan has received this first uh, first shipment which japan will use for generating electricity through thermal power 
you can also if you can remember this thing then it is well and good and if you can not remember this thing do not rush after things uh, which are so minuscule which have no uh, great importance from the exam point of view okay so just run after those facts which are relevant which are very important from the exam point of view okay so we have japan which has received it which country has sent it it is saudi arabia purpose for generating electricity through thermal power now here ends this question we have nothing to discuss uh, about this question any more and here we have concluded our all the questions but not the lecture you have to wait till the end because as i mentioned in the beginning that we are going to discuss some doubts put up by my students so quickly discuss the doubts and do listen to these doubts as well because they are very important for your understanding as well so we have cop 15 and cop 26 the student that is shivani has asked me what is the difference between the two so shivani let me tell you that cop 15 uh, which is going to be held in china is about biodiversity and cop 26 is going to be held on climate change so basically it will be conducted by unfccc unfccc is united nations framework convention on climate change so there is difference you can yourself see the difference is biodiversity and here we are talking about climate change now the other thing that shivani is asking me that are these two organized by the same organization so my answer is yes both these cops are organized by united nations so this is very important for you guys to understand this thing what is the difference which organization does it uh, organizes it and what is the purpose so i think we have covered the first question itself then we have the third element of this question which is this so shivani let me tell you that the cop 26 was originally going to be held in november 2020 and right now it has been postponed till 2021 so the edition is same but the year has been changed so this does not mean the edition is going to be changed the edition will remain 26 itself now i have a question for you guys you have to tell me that in which country cop 25 of un f triple c was held this is your question for the day you have to tell me in the comment section now let's discuss the second question put up by shivani ibc 2016 and the difference between ibbi regulations 2016 so first of all i want to tell you that ibbi is the insolvency bankruptcy board of india so it is an organization that is implementing ibc ibc is the law it is the agency which is implementing this law and this agency has been set up under ibc act 2016 it is not basically act it is insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 under which ibbi was set up and this is the implementing agency now this ibbi what does the organization do the organization regulates the functions of functions of insolvency professionals so basically IBBI what IBBI does it uh, regulates the functions as well as it provides the guidelines for insolvency professionals so that they can uh, complete the resolution process in a time bound manner time is a very important factor if a company is going in resolution uh, going into resolution today and the assets are realized after 5 years then it is of no use for creditors the creditors will not be able to get the exact amount which is there in the market today they will get the amount which is uh, five, which is the current market price after 5 years so therefore in order to reduce the loss of the stakeholders to the minimum the ibbi provides the guidelines 
for insolvency professionals so that they can uh, complete the resolution process in a time bound manner now the uh, now shivani has asked me about the various amendments so shivani the various amendments that was uh, done in august by uh, by ibbi that is second third and fourth amendments were only about insolvency professionals so that is all about ibbi and ibc ibc is the law that tells us that which organization can be uh, in can, uh, that which organization can uh, initiate the insolvency procedure against another person or another organization so i hope that the difference is clear between the ibbi and ibc and thanks for watching do come back tomorrow as well in this session thank you